sports shots now at Grendon Rangers Football Club. Uh, having an open day today, celebrating 70 years of non-stop football at the ground and 25 year anniversary of the under 16s going to Orlando. Um, we're in the home dressing room with club stalwart, legend, uh, long-term player, Stuart Leonard. Stuart, first of all, how has today come about and how has it been so far? Uh, yeah, it's been great so far. Um, been lovely to see uh, so many uh, familiar faces uh, from the club of yesteryear and um, a few of the present day as well, which is great. Um, so the committee have been delighted by some of the older boys coming back from the sort of 60s and 70s, which has been really pleasing. Um, a lot of work's gone in behind the scenes to make sure that um, everybody who's played for the club, I think, has been contacted either by uh, uh, Facebook or um, by individual invites, so it's really, really pleasing to see so many people here. Um, and then later on, we got a, uh, a dinner, um, a comedian at this disco as well. So I'm sure after a few drinks, people will start to uh, retell their stories of uh, yesteryear of playing for Grenham. You were one of those boys that 25 years ago were lucky enough to to be flown out to Orlando to a to an American football tournament. Tell us a little bit more about that. How did that come about and uh, how it went? Well, we were sponsored by um, a local company at the time um, and they had contacts in the States um, and then England didn't qualify for the World Cup that year um, and there was a local tournament up in Orlando. Um, so we were given the invite to go to that and compete against teams from all over the world. Uh, so we did a lot of fundraising in advance of that, a lot of hard work behind the scenes by uh, people like Pete Busby and our manager at the time, Roger Hawkins, who we're delighted to see here today. Um, and yeah, we went to the tournament um, and uh, did really well, came back with a trophy. Um, really uh, enjoyable experience for all the lads and uh, it's great to see uh, some of those here today, 25 years on. How long did you go actually go out there for? We were only out there for a week. Um, so the first day when we got there, it was 90 degrees and I think we played two games in that first day. So we played the lunchtime and then uh, again in the evening. We had one day off, uh, so we went to Disneyland, had a great day, uh, and then we were playing all the way through. So, yeah, we played. <coughs> excuse me, we played two days, uh, two games on the first day, and then a game every day after that for the whole week. And was it was it actually a knockout tournament or? A... Yeah, groups. Well, group stage to start off, um, and then knockout tournament from there. So uh, we went through, uh, surprised a few people, um, got a little bit of a reputation for us for, for ourselves. Uh, the team coming over from England, um, especially as England didn't qualify for the tournament that year. Um, so, and then we went all the way to the final and, and won it. Were you the only? End. Were you the only English team out there? Yeah, we were. Yeah, there was. I think there was a team from Jersey, um, but yeah, we were the only English side there. Lots of memorabilia in the hall today, yeah. reflecting on that. How many of you actually went out? Um, there was. I think there was only sort of fourteen players. Um, but there was the committee at the time, or members of the committee at the time, uh, management, um, a few wives uh, of the management. Um, but yeah, there was probably about 20 of us, I would have thought. No parents? Uh, there was a few parents who were involved in the sort of driving around of players at the time, uh, but so they were sort of more associated with the committee, but yeah. Um, <clears throat> at the time, did you? Lads. At the time, did you realise how much of a a privilege it was to be going out there? No, we didn't at the time, actually. Um, we were obviously quite excited to go to America and think, you know, we go to Disneyland um, and uh, have the opportunity to play out there. Um, but we didn't really, and we also didn't really realise quite a stir, stir it would cause back here as well. We got quite a lot of coverage in the local press and we were on the, the national news as well, which was great, um, particularly because England didn't qualify. It was a little bit of a uh, nice story uh, for, for English football at the time, so it was good. So your manager was better than Graham Taylor? Yes, yeah, our <laughs> manager was, was fantastic and um, Roger is um, a, a, a Grendon legend, a former professional footballer um, and he's certainly one of the reasons why I um, continue to, to play football. He's, he's been a, a major influence in my career. Um, we always looked at him um, as somebody to look up to um, and we still do to this day. So. Uh, we were delighted to have him as our manager and we were <clears throat> we were always really grateful for his knowledge and experience. He looked after us like he like he did uh, his own son, so it was fantastic and um, we love him to bits. 
You mentioned that it's 70 years of uninterrupted football at Grindon. It's not the biggest of... Is it a village? Yeah, it's village. Am I going to be abused for calling it a village? Yeah, it's not the it's not the biggest of villages, and and with South Midlands football and and North Bucks football, we see teams go week or season after season disappear, come back. Just how how has Grendon managed to keep football going? I think probably through the hard work and dedication of the committee. I think that's one of the key uh, the key aspects. We've got um, a really good group of, of players. Um, who have uh, continued to be with the club over the years with players coming and going. But I think the continuity, particularly from the committee, is uh, something we were very, very fortunate to have. You know, we've got a secretary who's been here over 50 years. Um, PJ, our chairman, has been in many, many years. And, uh, you know, the work they put in, we're very fortunate to have Jackie and Carol, who do all our food and hospitality. Robin, our groundsman, absolutely fantastic. We've just got so many... Um, great people behind the scenes and I think that's why we're able to sustain um, South Mids football with with such a um, a small village such as ours. Are you carrying on next season? Um, I've, uh, the, I might go to pre-season for, for fitness and see how we go um, but I'm going to enjoy the cricket season and uh, spend a little bit more time at home. If you've been here 25 years on and off playing yeah. for Grendon, yeah. you must have so many memories. Of- yeah. Great people, great players, great games, yeah, absolutely. cup competitions. Do you want to just reel off one or two? Yeah, uh, probably. Well, obviously the Orlando tournament was great, and we also won the um, knockout trophy that year, beating Bicester Town at Bicester Town one nil. Um, so that was obviously a big one. And then in adult football, probably the one of the best days that I can remember was when Grenon won the the Oven Cup for the first uh, for the first time. I think it was two thousand eleven. Um, so we won that for the first time, obviously a very sort of um, prestigious trophy in the local area. Um, I unfortunately didn't qualify to play at that point um, because I'd just, I'd just come back to the club. Um, so I missed out, but um, under Scott it was a, it was a fantastic day. Um, and those of us who were there will remember Pete Busby, our secretary, dancing around the Swan uh, with the trophy at four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I'm sure he's going to love that one. He will. Um, if I had to pin you down for a 1 to 11 of the best players you've had here in your time, yeah. could you do that? Yep. Yeah. Um, goalkeeper? Goalkeeper. Um, stalwart would be Robin Skillin. Love his communication. Tommy Wames is out, outstanding goalkeeper, so I, I, it would be a toss up between those two, definitely. Uh, ooh, let's, go, no. let's go old school 4 4 2, 4 at the back. <laughs> All right, two centre halves. Um, I'll probably have to pick myself. Um, Standard. Yeah, exactly. Um, I wouldn't pick myself really. <laughs> um, who would I pick? Probably Paddy Newell at centre back, who used to play um, at centre back. Another uh, player who's been at the club uh, a long time. Um, there was a lad called Nathan Craker who played in the um, Orlando side. He played at left back. He was outstanding. Um, right back. Ooh. Right back in my time, probably Daly Cross because he was really reliable. Um, midfield, the probably the best player that I played with at Grendon is a lad called Sean Alderman, um, who was here when I um, played here as a sort of under the Scott era. He was different class. Um, H, we've got a name, Paul Haddo. Um, club legend, over 700 appearances for Grendon, so he'll have to be in the, uh, the holding midfield role. Um, probably on the right hand side, I'd have to go um, Pete Stringer, um, so purely because he's my best mate. Um, he was all action at the time, so um, I'd have to pick him in the side or he'll, um, he won't be happy. Um, left hand side, oh dear. Um, left hand sided players. I think if you're going to play. Uh, uh, midfield player, a lad called probably Cameron McPherson was an excellent player um, for Grendon under the Scott in the Scott era, probably in the midfield somewhere, maybe not on the left, but definitely in the midfield. Um, and then centre forwards, we've had so many. Um, I think I could not pick um, Adam Perner really purely for the amount of goals over nearly 400 goals for the club. I could not pick Adam. 
Um, Nathan would have to be in and around there somewhere in sort of a number 10 role. I don't know how many players I've got so far. I think you missed left back, I'm not oh, sure. Oh, right, okay. I'm definitely not going to pick Andy Prescott. Um, overrated, in my opinion. <laughs> um, another centre forward. How many? Oh, another no, keep going, forward. keep going. Um, so, another centre forward, who we got? Um, yeah, I'd probably go Nathan and Adam up front. Um, so I'd go with them together, although they'd fall out after about five minutes. And who's the um, best manager you've played best under? Best manager, played under, I'm very fortunate to have some great ones, particularly in, in adult football here. Uh, but I'd have to say Roger Hawkins, different class. And how's, just rounding up this season, um, I think, it's, is it the highest ever finish for the club? Yeah, yeah, most so. points and highest, highest finish in the South Mids. Um, how's, um, how have you found it this season as, a, as an older player with so many young players coming through? Yeah, it's been good. Has, has it been an enjoyable season? Yeah, it has. I mean, the training's always um, interesting. You always learn a lot. Um, the, the players we've got are great, um, even though I'm a lot older than them. We have, we have a great laugh. The music's a bit, a bit rascal <laughs> at times, and Westy's a, but Westy's a great DJ. Um, yeah, we had we had a, we had a great season and a great time, and also having people like Alan involved as well has been great. Um, yeah, it's been really enjoyable. Well, thank you for this a uh, few moments to no reflect worries. on your time. We hope to see you here again next season. Thanks very much, and we'll let you get back to the beer. Thanks for the support. Thanks.